Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about prisms and ophthalmic optics. So prisms do what? They bend light, or they change the direction of light. Two big parts of the prism, apex and the base, remember? So light's going to come in and be bent towards which part of the prism? The base, very good. And the image is shifted where? To the apex, awesome. Image to the apex, say it back. Image to the apex. In result, the eye sitting over here, the front of the eye is going to rotate towards that image to keep the image on the fovea. So the front of the eye is rotating towards the apex. Remember that. Now we put prism in glasses in two ways. One, actual ground end prism. Two, induce prism by decentration, right? Purposely decentering the optical center of the lens from the visual axis, induced or decentered prism. So let's look at our problem with that. We have our frame parameters up here. So we did A plus DBL to get the frame PD of 66. We did the patient PD of 60, right? So we can see here that the lens, both lenses are going to be decentered out by three millimeters because the patient's PD is more narrow. So we have our nice drawing here with our pupils drawn in in the prism direction. We have our prescription here, put it on a power cross already. So we have plus 150 in the horizontal in the right eye. So we have the prisms drawn base to base, minus three in the 180 in the left. So prisms drawn apex to apex. With our nice drawing here, rule slash tip number one with any optics problem is draw it out, right? Gives you a nice visual, makes you less likely to make a mistake. So let's go ahead and solve. Now what's the name of this rule we use for induced prism, the name of this formula? Princess's rule, very good. So we have P for the amount of induced prism times C, the distance of displacement from the optical center in centimeters, I like using C to help me remember that centimeters is a unit, times F to the power of the lens. So we have 0.3 centimeters of displacement times 1.5, power of the lens gives you 0.45 prism diopters. What are we missing? The direction of the base, right? Let's look at our nice little drawing here. So for the right eye, it's going to be base out. The left eye, you're going to get 0.9 prism diopters. Where's the direction? Base in, towards the nose. It's right there in your drawing for you, right? So last part of these questions, let's find the total prismatic demand. Are you adding these two values together or are you subtracting? So let's think back to the beginning here, right? The front of the eye is going to rotate towards where? The image, the apex, right? So this eye here is going to rotate towards the apex, right? And then the left eye rotating towards the apex. So both eyes are moving left, right? That's going to be a version movement. So when it's a version movement, we have yoked muscles working, conjugate movement, both eyes looking simultaneously in the same direction. That's when we're going to subtract the two. For subvergence movement, when the eyes are moving in opposite directions, both eyes looking in, that's when we're going to add the two together. So here we're going to subtract, so you're going to get 0.45 prism diopters. For the direction, use the larger number for the direction, so it's going to be base n. 0.45 prism diopters of base n is the total prismatic demand, right? Very good. Little bonus question to stretch you a little farther. Is this going to be in or outside of the ANSI standard for horizontal induced prism? And it's going to be within, right? Because the standard is 0.67 prism diopters of horizontal induced prism.